Alrighty. Hey everybody, today we're going to go over you know, calculating the axis on an EKG and we'll go over some examples and I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can calculate the axis on an EKG. And so when we're saying axis, let's just define what it, what it even means. The axis, we're really talking about the QRS axis is. And so why that's important is uh, to, to understand that we're, we're looking at ventricular depolarization. So we're really only looking at this chart right here, the bottom half. So anything that the AV node passes down is what we're looking at. And so the purpose of calculating the QRS axis is to determine um, how the ventricles are behaving. And so we know in a normal conduction, the AV node takes the signal that is being passed from the S, you know, the SNO fires, the atria depolarize. The AV node takes that signal and it gives that to the Hiss Purkinje system, causing rapid depolarization of the ventricles. And so we know that generally, the vector that is created by ventricular depolarization is going to start here because this is the origin. This is the origin of the vector. And it's going to go in this direction down and to the left for ventricular depolarization. It's a big arrow. So we know it's going to go down and to the left. So our QRS that is created from that down to the left depolarization should typically be positive in one, positive in AVF. And if they're positive in one in AVF, we know that it's going to be somewhere, the axis of QRS depolarization is going to be somewhere in this quadrant. And so we can actually even get even more detailed with what that QRS looks like in one in AVF, for example, if in lead one, our QRS is really positive, and in lead AVF, it's just a little bit more positive than negative, then we know it's still going down to the left, but it's going more left than down. Conversely, if AVF is really positive and lead one is just barely more positive than negative, we know that our axis is might be going more downward than compared to the left, but they are both still going down to the left. So you can actually determine to what extent it's going down to the left, in this case by using leads one in AVF. If we had, so that's for normal axis. If we had, say, right axis deviation, which we define right axis deviation as a QRS that falls in this quadrant. So if a QRS falls in that quadrant, then if we draw our, our axis, our vector, it's going to look something like that. And so we know that it's going down. So AVF should be positive. And we know that it's going away from lead one. So lead one should be negative. So if there's right axis deviation, that's what I would see. And to the same example, if AVF is really, really, really positive in this case, and um, AVL is maybe, or excuse me, if lead one is maybe not as negative, then maybe it's going 
more towards APF. But if Li1 is extremely negative, then it might be going more this way, more away from Li1. So that would be right axis deviation. And then left axis deviation is a similar concept, except it is in um, the different quadrant. And so we would say if the axis is moving to the left, then we would say it's coming up that direction. And if it's going up in that direction, we would say that our QRS vector, which let me erase this, we would say that our QRS vector would be going like that. And if that's the case, we would have QRS in lead one that is positive is going to the left and a QRS and AVF that is negative, more negative than positive. And so that's how we can kind of determine what quadrants these QRSs lie in. And we also can determine from that how extreme that deviation might be. And so this is left axis deviation, right axis deviation, and then normal. And recall that each of our leads have an actual measured value from a degree standpoint along this axis, along this coronal plane. Lead one, it's at zero degrees. Lead AVF, which is perpendicular to that, is at positive. 90 degrees. So we know that lead 2 is positive 60 degrees. Lead 3 is positive 120 degrees. Lead AVL is now negative 30 degrees. And AVR is negative 150 degrees, right? Because 180 degrees would be right there. And so what we can say is that a normal QRS axis is between zero and positive 90 degrees. Right axis deviation is between positive 90 and 180 degrees. And left axis deviation is actually kind of interesting. Right here, in between one and AVL, if our axis falls in between one and AVL, I would call this leftward deviation is in between zero and negative 30 degrees. And I would say that an axis deviation is anything less than negative 30 degrees. So anything less than that would be on this side. That would be left axis deviation. And so when you assign that QRS axis, there's actually some ways that you can calculate this. And so let me clean this board up and I will show you various ways that you can calculate the axis on EKG. And so the first way to calculate the EKG axis is to take, use lead one and lead AVF. And so lead one and AVF, you can see that lead one is our X axis in a sense, and lead AVS is our Y axis in a sense. And so what I can do is I can determine is uh, the extent of positive forces in lead one or the extent of negative forces in lead one 
I can determine the extent of forces in AVF, and I can make a triangle, and I can calculate um, the axis. And so if I had a, uh, say, a QRS that was, say, it was positive in lead one, and then down here it was positive in AVF. So I know my axis in this case it was going down to the left, which is normal. What I could do is I could actually take, I can measure in millimeters the extent of positive forces in lead one. So how far leftward are these forces going? And say, that, for example, this is four millimeters. So if I plot a point here, I would say to the left, that measures four millimeters because that's the amount of positive forces that are being measured by our leftward axis. Then I would do the same thing here in our AVF. And say this is three millimeters. So I know that that's the amount of downward forces, three millimeters. And then I make a connection here. That's my, that's my axis arrow that is created by the four millimeter deflection and three millimeter deflection. This is a right angle. We know that's the right angle because we're using leads one and leads AVF. And then I want to calculate this angle and I'm going to call it theta. And if you can remember back to your geometry days, you know that tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. And so in this case, tangent of theta equals 3 over 4. And then you can solve for theta. You can use like the calculator of your choice. And so now that gives you the angle theta, which is the angle that would be created right here. And so that would give you your EKG axis. And you remember now, you know that theta is going in this direction. So you know that you're going to have a positive theta because we're in this part of the EKG. You can do this with any positive or negative deflecting QRS. And so just to give you another example of how you can do that, the different type of axis. Say we had an individual in lead one looked negative and AVF looked positive. So we know if it's going negative in lead one, we're going away from lead one. And if it's positive in AVF, we're going towards AVF. So we know this one is going down and to the right. And so now, in order to make this triangle, this arrow is, the triangle would be completed by going away from lead one and down. And so this is a right angle. And so we can actually just use this diagram that I'm just drawing now to fill in our values. So what is the force, the amplitude of forces going away from lead one? Well, that's going to be our negative deflection here. So I'm going to measure this negative, And I'm going to say that this is five millimeters. So I'll, I'll label that as five. And then the forces that are going down are going to be the positive forces here in AVF. And we'll say that this is four millimeters. This is four. So I want to determine now the value of theta, which is right here, theta. So when a tangent of theta is opposite 4 over adjacent 5, then I can solve for tangent, or for theta. And that gives me that angle. But that is not the axis. That's not the number that is going to be represented. So what you need to do is figure out, okay, well, I know that 
this angle is theta. I know that this angle to get to theta is 180 degrees. And so say in this case, theta is 40. Say in this case, theta is 40. Well, in order to get there, I've got 180 degrees here, right? That's represented by 180. And now I need to subtract 40. So 180 minus 40 equals 140 degrees. So I know that on this plane, I'm at 140 degrees, which really is what I want to know is this angle is 140 degrees. So that's the one way that you can calculate the, the QRS axis. The last thing I want to show you is um, how you can maybe do this a little bit more with the, with the eyeball. And so this is my way that I like to do it. And um, it's, it's helpful whenever maybe you're just trying to quickly get an axis. So what I like to do is I like to, step one, find the ISO electric lead. So remember, a lead is created by a positive electrode, a negative electrode, and that if forces are going perpendicular to those electrodes, so not going towards or away, it's going to create a deflection that is equally positive as it is negative. And so, that is called ISO electric. The challenge with this is that it could also be going perpendicular the opposite way. Right, so earlier I was going from inferior to superior. Now I'm saying that this electrical activity is going from superior to inferior, and it would still create an isoelectric deflection. So what I can infer is that if any lead Whatever the isoelectric lead is, I know that the axis is perpendicular to that lead. Okay. Now I just got to figure out what direction, and we can use some context clues to figure that out. So, say for instance that I have an EKG, and on lead two, it looks like this. So I would say that this is isoelectric. And so I know that perpendicular to lead two, and lead two we said is 60 degrees. Perpendicular to lead two is somewhere maybe like this. We know it's somewhere like that because we know AVL is negative 30 degrees, which would be a right angle, so perpendicular. And so I know the axis is either going up this way or down this way. I, just, I don't know yet because I need to use some context clues. Well, what's the best way to determine which way it's going? I could look at AVL in this case. And if AVL is positive, then I know, oh, so this axis is going perpendicular towards AVL or up and to the left. Let's say AVL was negative QRS, then I could say, oh, I know it's going perpendicular to lead to, but away from AVL. And so that's a quick way for me to determine pretty accurately how my axis is, and then I can calculate it. I know if it's going exactly perpendicular to lead two, I know we just need to either add or subtract 90 degrees. So this direction I would subtract 90 degrees. In this direction I would add 90 degrees. So if it was negative in lead one, I would take 60 plus 90, and this would be an axis of 150 degrees, positive 150 degrees. 
another example of this that's maybe not as straightforward would be say we have a um a QRS actually they're all they're all they all have uh, accesses that are or other leads that are perpendicular but say we'll just do another actually we'll just go through some EKGs let's do that so let's look through this EKG these are just the limb leads which is all we need to calculate the axis and so we're not going to worry about the P waves even though they're there and they're good we're not going to worry about the PR and roll we're just going to look at the QRSs to determine the axis specifically with the QRS and so I'm not going to use this tangent of theta method because I think that it is a bit cumbersome you know I'm trying to figure out what this is and treat my patient and so I'm going to look for the most isoelectric lead so one look for the most isoelectric lead and if I look I see that AVL is nice and isoelectric. And so I know that AVL is going up and to the left at negative 30 degrees. And I know that if it's isoelectric, it must be perpendicular to AVL. And so in red, I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to AVL. And from there, I'm going to determine, well, is it going this way or this way? I don't know. And so I'm going to use my context clues. Well, I know if it's going this way, it must be going down. And if it's going down, then I'm going to have a positive AVF. And so if I look here, I see I have a positive AVF. And so I know that that QRS axis is going down. And then... In order to calculate what the angle is here, I just take 30 degrees, I add 90 degrees, and I get a positive 60 degree axis. And that's my axis. And that's a normal QRS axis because normal is between zero and positive 90 degrees. And that checks out. All right? If we wanted to do it the the other way where we just look at is it up in lead one, is it up in ADF? That's true. So we know it's going down to the left. So that's good. And let's look at an example of maybe a left axis deviation. And so we're just going to look at the QRSs. So the first thing I'm going to do is maybe I'll eyeball it and I'll say, okay, we're up in one, so we know we're going to the left. We're down in AVF, so we're going up and to the left. And we're going up and to the left to some degree. So I would say we already know that we're, we're going somewhere left in terms of the deviation. But we're better than that, and we want to know exactly what that axis is. We need to calculate it. And so I find just within our limb leads, 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, and AVF, I look for the most isoelectric QRS, and I see that AVR is nice and isoelectric. And I know that AVR, the lead of AVR, is this way, up and to the right, at negative 150 degrees. And if it's isoelectric in that lead, I know that I'm going to have an axis that is perpendicular to that. And so now I need to figure out, is it this one or is it this one that is our actual QRS axis? And so I can use some context clues. One, I already know that it's going up and to the left, and so I can just go ahead and guess. But, you know, you can just do some other clues. Well, I see that it's positive in AVL, so I know it's going left. It's negative in AVF, so it's going up. And so we know that this is going to be going up and to the left, and so that is going to be the axis. To calculate the angle, we know that this AVR is negative 150, 
And so if I subtract 90 degrees, I can get the angle here. So 150 minus 90 equals 60. And so this is the axis of negative 60 degrees, which is left axis deviation. Because we know left axis deviation is anything less than negative 30 degrees, which will be anything more negative than negative 30. It's a good example of how to calculate left axis deviation. And then now let's look at another example. Remember, we're only going to look at our limb leads to calculate the axis here. And so again, I'm going to look for the most isoelectric QRS. And oh, once again, it's AVR. We know that AVR is this direction at negative 150 degrees. So this must be perpendicular to AVR. This axis. And so I want to figure out is it going down or is it going up? I look at AVF. It's going towards AVF, so it must be going down. So we can say confidently that this, oops, that this is our QRS axis. And to calculate that, we take 150 and we are going to add 90 degrees. So you gotta remember that on my plane here, I'm gonna draw this in black of my angles. So we've got here's 150 degrees, here's 180 degrees. So when we're doing 90 degree changes, we know that this is 30 degrees. So essentially we're gonna be going 30 degrees this way and then another 60 degrees this way. So 180 minus those 60 is going to be 120 degrees. And because it's on this plane, it's going to be a positive 120 degrees. And so we know that right axis deviation is between positive 90 and 180 degrees. And so this is right axis deviation. So that's a quick way to determine your axis. And this checks out with all of our other methods. The eyeball method, it's down in one. So we know that the axis is going somewhere to the right, away from lead one. It's up in AVF, so we know it's somewhere going towards AVF. And so if you combine the two of those, it's going down and to the right. And that would check out with our axis deviation. So I hope this helps. Remember, there's three methods. I would use them in this order. I would use the eyeball method of what's happening in lead one, what's happening in AVF. That's my first method. If you want to calculate the number, I would find for my second method, the most isoelectric lead, and then go perpendicular to that lead and then determine to what degree are you going perpendicular. Then method number three would be um, actually calculating the amplitude of forces in our x and y axis leads, which are lead one, AVF, make that triangle and calculate the tangent of that angle and then incorporate it into our, um, the value that actually represents our axis. So 